they broke the news to my mom when after they did all the MRIs and stuff, right? They did the CAT scans and this stuff, and they said, your son is fractured at C3, C4 vertebrae. He'll be paralyzed from the neck down for the rest of his life. He'll never eat again on his own, like solid food. He'll never be able to breathe on his own. He'll never walk again. And we're hoping he's strong enough to make it through the surgery. My mom was in a room with my teammate, Scott Malone, and his mom. My teammate <laughs> bust down the hallway, screaming, cursing, crying. His mom got to go console him. My mom starts talking to another doctor, and another doctor that told, broke that news to her. Left, like, you know, he was very blunt. Left and went to get prepared for the surgery. Now the doctor's talking to my mom, like, you know, you got this percentages of that and that, but at that time, my mom wasn't trying to hear that. But they let me see her before I went into the surgery. And I vaguely remember this. I remember, I guess the adrenaline was still flowing. It had to be. The adrenaline was still flowing from the game, but right before I went into the surgery, I said to my mom, I'll be back. And when she heard me say that, Everything changed, and we'll get into that, but everything changed. Wow. It, it, listen, I get it. I, mm -hmm. I, I totally get it. Just hearing those words come from your mouth, mm -hmm. I'm sure the level of peace that it puts your mother at, mm -hmm. just reminding her, number one, who her son is, and number two, I don't care what the doctors say. There is a man that holds all the cards. Mm -hmm. The man upstairs, the doctors can only tell you what science tells them. Mm -hmm. But if you believe in something greater through him, all things are possible. So I could just imagine the strength you gave your mother in that moment whispering, I'll be back. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk to me, you know, because you had, you went through something that most people will never go through. Mm -hmm. We can all talk about our life changing in an instant, but many of us have not yet experienced, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But many people who are watching this have not experienced something literally that my life changed in an instant. When you were told you have, I don't know, 5% chance of ever breathing again, 5% chance of ever walking again, for you, how do you even take some news like that? Because that is not the news that you expected to get on the day that you woke up and played that game like you have been playing since you were five years old. And for somebody, I mean, it's one thing, hey, my football career is in jeopardy, but it's a whole other thing. My yes. life has just changed forever. Can you help us to understand the mindset of even getting some news like that? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, so this is how it all happened. When I, I told you, I don't remember anything till Wednesday. Mm -hmm. but I finally started to come into off of, you know, all the medication and, you know, after the surgery and stuff, I start remembering stuff. I, I wake up to a room, Sean, I'm telling you, posters, jerseys, footballs, helmets, they did teddy bears. They decorated my room. I started getting, it was, I, it was in the media all over from every college out there, you know, every division one college, USC, Miami, Notre Dame, Penn State, just, Everyone sending me well. Then NFL, they start sending stuff. And I remember my mom, when I woke up that day, she goes, Eric, let me know when you want to talk. And I had that conversation. But at the time, I said, you know what? Let me just enjoy what's going on around here. At lines, that, you know, hunt, hundreds of people. We took over the whole waiting room, you know, coming to see me, visit me. I'm catching up with people I haven't seen since middle school. Even though I'm exhausted, I'm falling asleep half the time on the people. It was good to be able to just feel that love, that comfort. And through the tough times, I remember my sister would read the fan mail to me because it was coming from all over the world. And I remember just sitting there breaking down and crying. And then my aunt would always read Psalms 23 to me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that helped me get through those times. And that, you know, finally led me up into later on that week or the next week, I finally had asked my mom what my diagnosis was. Hold, hold, hold on. 
You're telling me it took you several days to a week before you actually asked your mother, what's my diagnosis? And more important, you just dropped something that's dope. I mean, we often talk about, and I know even me, it is a daily practice. And I'm not really that great at it. I ain't mastered it yet. To try to live in the moment, be present, be here now. As I'm talking to Eric, be here, feel his energy, feel this moment. Are you telling me that for almost a week, you were able to be present? You're lying in a hospital bed. Don't know if I'm gonna live, I'm gonna die. I don't know, I don't even know my prognosis. <laughs> I just want to feel this moment? I do. Wow. I did. I, That's dope. I remember laying in that bed and I've always been the one, like people have always looked up to me. I've always been that leader. I've never been knocked down like this to see the response of the people coming to see me. I felt like I owed it to them to give my, even give them my time, give them my moment. I knew something bad happened. Obviously I got tubes coming out of me every which way, neck brace on. I knew it was bad, but to live in that moment where I'm with my friends, my people I grew up with, my teammates coming to see me, people I haven't seen in such a long time. And I remember saying like, like, how are you like, like what's going on with your life? Like people filling me in like on what's happening with them. And you know, my team, I'll never forget, I still must've been on some medication. My friend Tyler came in the room. I was like, yo, Ty, where the party at tonight? And he, he was like, uh, yeah, I think you need to take it easy tonight. <laughs> And later, later, I found out that he left the room and just broke down, cried and everything. Like, but no, I, I, what my mom told everybody, listen to this. Whoever goes in the room to see Eric, you have to have a smile on your face. Don't let him see you upset. Be positive. Be energetic. And I'm telling every single person that came into my room, was even the doctors at the time, hey, Eric, what's going on? Like, like it was nothing. And that it put me at ease. Later, of course, later I found out, out, you know, all my friends, they're like, you know, once things started to get better, yo, E, man, I left your room and I was bawling my eyes out <laughs> crying up. But at the, in the moment, everyone was, everyone was just so peaceful and cheerful. And I'm so thankful for my mom for doing that because I literally didn't see anybody upset for that first, you know, three weeks of, of my injury. It was, it was insane. And I'm out. I'm thankful to them. My family's are staying so strong for me in that moment. You know, we spoke offline about your mother. And, you know, as I was studying and preparing for this interview, I had uh, become such a fan, not of yours, not just of yours, but of your mother. Every clip I see you in, I see her in. <laughs> Every behind the scenes, every public outing, she is right there. And I just think it's such a blessing. And I hate to phrase it this way, but although you, God, although God allowed this to happen to you, he knew that you had a support system in place and ready for this moment. And just hearing you even speak about your mother, I wanna just take a minute and just give it up to her publicly because it appears in, in just taking your, she has been there every step of the way, not just physically, but mentally and psychologically and making sure everybody else showed up physically, psychologically, mentally, the right way for you to get you through this day. Absolutely. And that's, that's been my mom my whole life. Everyone, everyone around the neighborhood, they always do when you heard my mom's voice, they got a little bit nervous. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my, mom, my mom didn't play. My mom always like, she, she let me, like she let me live. She let me learn on my own, but she was always, if something was, didn't feel right, she would nag, 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 nag until, you know, I did it right. And she knew with my friends, they knew when they come over, it's like, hey, 
I got to act right here. You know what I mean? Everyone knew that. So after my injury happened and, you know, my aunt's, you know, the, the rock, my aunt's the prayer ro- warrior of the family, keeping everyone together. You know, my, when they, when my uh, uncle, when he was killed by a drunk driver back in 94, you know, obviously I don't remember because I was only like four years old. My aunt kept my mom, kept my, my grandma, everyone together. My grandpa died uh, three months before I was born. My aunt kept everyone together. So now this injury happens to me and my mom and my aunt are literally, you know, feeding off of each other energy. And my mom said, okay, we're going to get through this. We're going to stay positive. And like you said, all the stuff now that you see that I do, she's there behind the scenes. She literally, when I, she stayed at Kessler where I was living for five months as an inpatient rehabilitation on a pullout couch. She only didn't stay there for three days, three nights. She didn't stay there. You know, my girlfriend stayed, you know, some nights on another pullout couch at the time. And my uh, my aunt would stay sometimes, but three nights out of five months, she wasn't there. That's because she got sick one time and had to stay home. And her back still pays for that, that sleeping on that pullout couch. But she wanted to learn as much as possible to how to take care of a quadriplegic now who's my son, who's going to need me. And I'm forever thankful for that. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.